What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Dead in Bermuda, or as I like to call it, Dib. I don't know, it reminds me of those little ice cream treats you get at the movie theater or whatever, where it's the chocolate covered ice cream with the chocolate chips and oh, dibs are so good. I might have to get some tonight. You know what I did last night? I went and I got a Slurpee and like some Airheads. Dude, it's been so long since I had Airheads, but the orange ones are so good. They didn't used to have orange ones when I was a kid. They had blue ones, they had green ones, they had red ones, and that was pretty much, and they always had like the silver random ones where they were like white colored, but the packaging was silver and you never knew what you were getting. Those were like all they had when I was a kid. They have like orange ones now, they have pink ones. They're pretty good too. I mean, it's all artificial flavoring, but it's delicious. So we had to click on a map and visit a new area. Let's take a look around here. I like this game a lot. It's one that I've enjoyed pretty tremendously. I think that what I would like to do... Oh, they wanted me to do this right here. Okay, so they just wanted me to look at the location that I already scavenged the crates off of. We'll go back to our camp. I don't want to do that. I want to click on the little fireplace right there. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to set a flame in our camp. That would be great. He always looks baked. Like, Alejandro looks super stoned, like, all the time. He's like, killer. Yup. You want to go walk through the jungle? Sweet. Hey, look. That flower. It has buds. Buds. What a weird word. Ever think about the word buds? It's fun to say. One of those weird things that only stoners think about. Believe me, my best jokes have all been written under the influence of Mary Jane. Like, the funniest stuff that I've ever written down on a notepad for, like, stand-up random stuff like that, or, like, improv or whatever, it's all come from when you're baked. It's a fantastic weed. It is a fantastic little leaf for when you're trying to be creative, but for other things, not quite so useful. Bob over here, Jacob, I gave that up a long time ago, though. I am the worst worker on Earth when I'm high, and so in order to stay up with my YouTube work, eh, had to give it up a year or two ago. Jacob and Bob, they're still working on researching, what are we researching? Sleeping areas. Ah, uh, yes. Much, much better than the sleeping perimeter, the sleeping circumference. You need the sleeping area. Length times width and all that kind of fun stuff. But not quite so awesome as the sleeping volume. The sleeping volume, fantastic. Not really well motivated. Snores a lot, but you know, length times width times height and all that fun stuff. They're working on that. That should be fine. I'm going to leave them on research for right now. They're going to talk. I like to check everything before I, like, click on the button just to make sure. I think we should be good, though. Next! And so he got a crafting skill. That's good. We lost a pillow, a rope, ten wood, and that should allow us... Oh, wow, that's going to take a while to get done. And they're getting quite fatigued. It looks like they got along the whole time, though, so that's good. Research is moving along on this side together. It looks like they got along as well. Very, very nice. Believe me, once you have Discord in your camp, it's a lot... It's difficult to get rid of. It is different, so you kind of want people to get along up front. You want to have a strong face, because once people start to hate each other, it's difficult to reverse the trend. And it looks like everybody's still getting along good. It's on a scale from 0 to 100, by the way. This is where the real drama happens, though. Every night by the campfire is when people fight or get along. And you can tell what's going to happen based on the people that are talking to each other. Once you've played the game once or twice, based on the people that'll come up, you're like, oh, they're going to fight. Just based on their personalities and kind of like the pre-written scripts. So, okay, good work, everybody. I know it's been hard, but we managed to scavenge some food in that damn plane. Well, I'm sure there's more if we continue to search the place. But it'll only last for a few days. After that, we're going to be on our own. Anybody know how to hunt? I do, but not with my bare hands. Well, we'll need to find or craft some tools then. Let's share the food we found right now. We should ration our daily meals. And water, too. An average man will die after only three days without water. A frightening thought. Well, don't worry. We can make juice out of fruits. The island is covered in jungle. We should find plenty. Yeah. It's a pretty good idea you just had. We'll need plenty of those if we want to survive until help comes. What help? Um. Well, we should at least try to reach the jungle. Maybe somebody lives there. Hmm, yeah. And if we find a big tiger, we're dead. Hmm. Well, tomorrow's another day. Good night, everybody. Good night, Alice. So there. And if it's, everybody's going to get more hungry, but their fatigue... Actually, no, we don't have the sleeping spot, so their fatigue's not going to go down. So here's how you feed everybody. At the end of every day, you want to make sure to feed everybody and water everybody. If you don't... It's not going to work out super well for you. It's going to be problematic. 
So for right now, what I'd like to do is let's throw these meals will degrade every single day. The percentage up here is how much hunger it'll fix. This down here, so like 10 to 20%, for example, is how much. This is how many you have. Every day there's a chance that your food will rot and become barely edible. Or even worse, it'll become inedible. So watch out for that. But for right now, I think the best use, nobody's super hungry. I think I'm going to use the basic meals on as many people as possible. Especially the people who have lower hunger. So we'll match those up like so. There we go. Her hunger is pretty low. His is lowest. And then what I would suggest we do is use these on the people who have worked up like a real, real hankering for a hunger. Somebody's feeling a mite hungry, as they like to say when I was a kid. So we'll throw that in right there. And that's going to end it. That was pretty much all of our meals, though. We need to, like, really get on this one. Part of the reason that happened is because I didn't leave him in the plane searching for things longer and longer and longer. Our fire intensity has gone down by 29%, so it's burning off a little bit. You really, really, really don't want your fire to go out. That is the worst thing ever. Getting a fire started in a survival situation is a pain in the ass. If you don't have either a fire drill or, like, a bow drill. If you don't have... I mean, if all you have is, like, a stick and a plank, and you've got to do it with the notch method with the tinder... Oh, God, it sucks. It sucks so much. Or by spinning the stick, doing the itsy-bitsy spider... It is a pain in the ass to get a fire started just like without anything. Some people are better than others at it. I am like, yeah, it's going to take me a little while. Don't don't count on it. Don't count on it, especially if everything's wet. So once you've got the fire started, it would almost be worth taking, not in game, but in real life. You want one guy whose job is like, babysit the fire. Don't let this go out. You should also make some kind of covering for it in case it starts to rain because you don't want to be wiped out by real life RNG. Okay, and so that's the end of the tutorial right there. That's it. That's all that we're going to get. So with the campfire, let's go ahead and feed some wood into here. It's got 71%. Each bit of wood will give it 10 to 20%. And we got a full 20 out of there. Very, very nice. That's going to keep us running for a while. Let's take you, sir. His depression is still a little bit high. But let's put everybody back on the jobs that they were already on on the previous day. We're going to have Yuri run off in that direction, see if maybe he can find some stuff. Let's put Julia back on the exploration team on this side because she seems to be pretty good at it. Let's take a look at the map. It looks like they found something right here. It's going to be a moist suitcase that appears to be growing some kind of fungus. It's only got one eyeball on that side. Oh, never mind. There's the other eyeball right there. I always thought that these looked like faces when I was a kid, so that's why I say it. With the moist suitcase, let's bring... You can inspect it. You find a suitcase certainly coming from your plane crash. Does it belong to anybody who survived? Does it really matter anymore? Let's see if we could take a look with... I'm going to send out Yuri, I guess. His stealth is kind of bad, but his scavenging is good enough to where we get bonus loot. The problem is that our skill sets are a little bit scattered at the moment. I'm going to send Alejandro. He's a little bit wounded, but... Hey, he succeeded. Hell yeah. Is there something useful in here? Hopefully so. We found six fabric, two psychology magazines, a chocolate box, and three painkillers. So that'll be good, just in case we need to heal people on up. I think, don't mind the squeaking, I'm actually trying to move my pop filter around right now. It's moved around. You don't know what a pop filter is. It's a little screen that goes in front of your microphone so that when you make plosives, which is anything that starts with like a P or like a strong B or like a strong T sometimes. T's don't trigger it very often, but B's and P's tend to be the big one. Especially if you don't know how to kind of like suck in words while you do them. You gotta... You'll learn it. If you ever do like radio or anything like that, when you make a P sound, you kind of want to either aim a different direction when you do it, or you kind of roll it off your mouth instead of being like, plosive. Because if you do it like that and you just pop it on out, it's not going to be fun. It's going to make the mic make a splitting, just kind of crackly noise every single time as it peeks out. So on this side, we have people who are fatigued, but I really think that it's worth it for us to keep people exploring. So I'm going to have them going down the beach this way, or maybe cut to the right in here. I'm not really sure. We'll figure it out either way. Let's take the next turn. So you found eight wood, five rope, three tasty meals, three normal meals, five fruit, one axe, and one toolbox. That's a pretty good pull right there. Well done, amigo. Well done. Over here on the researching or the crafting side, he got one to his crafting skill, as did he. Very, very nice. That should keep us trucking. Did they fight while they did this? No, they got along. Good. Okay, on this side, hopefully the research will get done for the next thing down the list, which is going to be gathering tools. Now, I don't really know. It says we need some tools to help us gather resources in the jungle, since the resources we can scavenge from the plane are not infinite. 
This thing, I think it just sort of organizes your tools or something. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but you have to get it done before you can do some of the more advanced actions out in the dun- Oh, they get along really well. That's good to note. If you notice that two people get along more frequently, pay attention to that, or even write it down if you have a bad memory. Because over time, leadership skills are going to be needed in a survival situation with any group of people. You want to start locking in on personalities who are ex-military, who may have had a combat command or anything like that. People who have survival skills, you got to decide in a survival situation whether you want it to be a meritocracy, a democracy, or a dictatorship. That's one of the things that you should set up first things first when you start in a situation like this with multiple people. Are we working together hand in hand and just sort of being communal about this do we want one person to be in charge and if we do we all have to agree that that one person gets to make calls and we have to follow them without questioning it if we want it to be a democracy we have to figure out a way where we have a council every night and talk and we have to make sure everybody's present nobody's skipping nobody's manipulating votes and things like that you got to be you got to be careful about the situation it'll be a lot easier if you have somebody in the group who has already taken command in a real life setting it'd be easier just to delegate it to them then and just have them organize people since they already have the ability to do so anybody who works in corporate business as a manager anybody who knows how to optimize and use people's skill sets in order to get things done synergy and all that fun stuff the promotion of synergy i'm gonna have this search let's go ahead and do it with yuri his fighting skill is actually not so good this time around when I played the game previously, he had really, really good fighting skills and really good scavenging, so I assume there's some randomization that goes into all this. Let's have... You know, I'm going to have him stealth his way in. His stealth is so good that I would prefer to avoid injury over everything else. Even if we miss out on items, I just don't want to get bit in the face by a crate snake. And so he gets success right there. He got plus one to his stealth skill. You almost faint from the smell, but you managed to loot something from the fisherman's basket. So we got one basket. We got a scavenging skill. Five fresh fish, one fish bait. I should have probably left that alone until we researched cooking. Little disappointment right there. Fish does not hold well. On the plus side, if you find anything around here, you can grow and make a little kind of farming plot. Oh yeah, he leveled up. We gotta, we gotta handle that. So when you level up, you get skill points based on your intelligence. The more intelligence you have, the more skill points you get. And so the more intelligent people are naturally going to adapt to this curve faster. Whereas the people with lower intelligence, they tend to have more specialized skills in this game. To kind of balance it out. His hunting is at 85. We can't hunt yet. But I don't know. I haven't gotten far enough into the game to determine whether or not it's a good idea to have people just be killer at one thing. Or whether it's a good idea to spread your points around a little bit and make sure that they all know how to do different stuff. In this case, I think that I'm going to go for... He can fish pretty well. It's not too bad. So this gives him almost 40% to his hunting-based actions efficiencies. Let's take that up and see how that affects it. So that's going to give him a pretty considerable boost right there on yields. And so let's say when he goes out to hunt, if he gets 50% extra food, if you get 5 food, that'll give him an extra 2.5. I mean, this would actually be worth, I think, pushing. If we're going to be trying to conserve food and things like that later on, it might be a good idea. And he's good at hunting as well, so he should be able to adapt that on his own. I think I'm going to specialize him to be a hunter-gatherer and maybe crafter. I don't know. People level up pretty quickly in this game, so eh, we'll make some mistakes. If we end up dying very, very quickly, we'll go through and we'll play another time through. Because the game's randomized every time, so you can do that. It's got replay value. Yuri's over here handling that. His depression's a little bit meh, but I think we should be able to make it work. Everybody just stay on task here. I really, really, really need some of these things to get done before the next day because we have no way to liquidate our fatigue right now. And so it's going to be getting pretty high until we figure that out. With regards to the jungle, can they turn inland yet? They cannot. And so it looks like we may actually have some trouble getting inland before too long. Let's go ahead and end our turn. Nothing else going on. You got five wood, four rope, three tasty meals, three meals. And his fatigue has gone up slightly. Depression is going to be the big killer right there. In the crafting station. Oh, they went to 96. Oh, that's such a bummer. They're so close. They're so close. It's because they get diminishing returns based on their fatigue and sickness. So the more tired and the more sick you are, the worse you do the job, even if you have tons of skill points in it. So unfortunately, oh, they fought while they did at that time. That sucks. One exploration right there. The next beach spot has been found. And they got along the whole time. I actually tentatively, I try to pay attention to them, like, getting along and not getting along. Did you fetch some wood for tonight? Huh? Uh, yeah. Don't forget, tomorrow we have a lot to do. 
I wanted to check this new area in the jungle, and we have to gather some fruits. And if you could do some work on the craft table, that'd be, like, great. Did you advance since last time? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I'll do what I can, alright? Spoken like a true couple that's been married for a long ass time. Just do your best to, like, stonewall the other person. <laughs> it's important, you know. We're counting on you. I'm counting on you. But we work more here than in a factory. We need to rest sometimes, too. Well, we don't have time to rest. If we want to see our daughter again someday, we can't do it slow. I know. I I want to see her again just as much as you do. It's just that you're making me feel stressed. I know there's a lot to do. I just I need some quiet time tonight before going all out. Oh, so we, so we can't talk. Alright, well, do as you wish. It's just always the same. We can't count on you. Well, that doesn't help at all. That's all kinds of bad. So apparently the married couple are going to be on each other's nerves right off the bat here. If it was going to be anybody, I guess, this is a rough situation to be in. You don't want to give people fresh fish until you cook it because it'll make them sick. But for right now, let's get in there on some of these little meals here. I'm going to try and give these to just about everybody since the next time that they go bad, they're going to become, like rotten and I think we have enough to give to everybody here so I'm gonna try and save the good stuff and then we'll give her one of the good ones that'll get her all nice and patched up from there you can use non-perishable foods weirdly enough in this game fruits are non-perishable and then you also have like jerky rations and stuff like that I think you make them out of meat and fish and whatnot but for right now let's continue so we've got some of our meals have turned into barely edible stuff so that's a little bit disappointing, but we'll use the best we can right there. And then everybody seems to be feeling the burn right now, so if we could finish the resting spot, that would be best. The next thing that I want to do is the fatigue is getting kind of high over here. He only needs 4% to finish the next part. So I think I'm going to take him. Let's take... Alice, who's depressed and upset, will bring her over here. Her fatigue's getting kind of high, too. How are you looking? He's still doing all right, so I'm going to keep him on it for right now. Their depression and their fatigue is still looking okay. I mean, there's stuff that needs to get done, so unfortunately, I can't cut a whole lot of breaks right now. We've got a new square that we can go to. This one has a machete on it. Cool. Probably one of the most useful items you could possibly find on an island like this. If you're out of luck with a blade, the most useful survival items you're going to need, blade, so any cutting tool in all reality, because we have the fuselage of a plane, I wouldn't doubt the fact that we might be able to make ourselves a number of cutting tools out of the sharper edges by peeling back the fuselage. Still, finding an object that is designated for this task would be nice, especially since if we're on an island chain, we may be able to find metamorphosed chert around, which is flint, which then you could use to sharpen a weapon with flint and steel, assuming you didn't get a cheap Walmart machete. should be able to strike a fire, and so that'll be alright. It's more difficult than it sounds, but eh. It's a leg up over trying to start it with just like your hands and nothing else. On top of that, I would say a cutting tool and lashings. That's like the two things that you are going to need. And so if you don't have a lanyard ring and a cutting tool, it might be a little bit gnarly out here trying to get things done. But still, if you can get yourself rope and a cutting tool, you'll be able to build just about anything. Find a machete. You wonder where its owner went. You hope he's not a psychopath. And a typo right there, unfortunately. Just pointing it out in case the devs are watching. You never know. I find it... The devs find their way to my videos a lot of the time, so I try to point these things out so that they can fix them real quick, add them to the list. It's better than, you know, taking the time to bug report it, since they always seem to end up here anyways. We're on day number three in the manana, or I guess in the morning. Let's go ahead and... Go for another set of actions. In the morning, he finds four wood, one rope. He got a scavenging level, two tasty meals, two normal meals, five barely edible stuff, one fresh fish, two painkillers. A chocolate box. Why was there fish on the plane? Somebody must have been leaving from a fishing trip or something like that. On this side, he got a crafting level and he was able to finish off the description. Or, I'm sorry, he was, I was reading while I was talking. It never works out well. It never works out well. He was able to finish off our shelter so people could take a nap now, which will be really, really awesome. There it is. I love that. I love the way that this little area starts to become decorated with the fruits of your labors. Makes me happy. So we got knowledge over here. The next research is almost there. And it looks like they got along while doing that, which canceled out the fact that they fought last time. People are going to have to learn to get over it in a situation like this, and that's 100% the truth. She found never sick. Her sickness decreases by a 1 to 5, 
every now and again, so she takes after me. I don't get sick very often either. I have a wonderful immune system. I've always wondered what that's due to. I assume that it's because my family is of mixed heritage. Like when you mix blood groups together genetically, it's always pretty good for long-term survivability when two groups with no contact to each other. But similar, I guess, when neighboring groups tend to cross the boundary and like breed and create offspring, it tends to work out pretty well. Ooh, they fought while they were on that trip. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, we got a number of people who are actually really, really fatigued right now. And we've got to decide who's going to crash out. So, fatigue's not so bad right there. I think having him sleep is probably going to be a good idea. I think having him sleep is going to be a really, really good idea. Her fatigue is only 46. So I'm going to save the slot for somebody that's more fatigued. Which I guess in this case would be Julia. And then on top of that, let's take a little bit of time and let's work on depression. And so since we have our food made for the rest of the day, his depression is going to be a little bit high because he's looking at dead bodies all day. These two ladies over here seem to be doing pretty well. Ooh, her fatigue is really, really high. Maybe I'll take her then. Her depression is only 6% though. Eh, let's see if she can maybe finish something off with exploration. Her exploration skill is not so good. Is she any good at crafting? Is she any good at scavenging? She's pretty much terrible at everything aside from fighting and away missions. Her discussion's no bueno either. I guess I'll leave her on exploration for right now. I mean, her fatigue is meh. It's not so good, but for right now, we really, really need winters to take a relaxation break. So there it is. This is going to be our siesta for the afternoon. Go ahead and trigger things up next. Nobody's doing research, so I'm not going to worry. I'm sorry. Nobody's working on crafting. In researching, we got ourselves. We need some tools to help us harvest fruits. Fruits are easy to pick up, and we can make juice out of them. So I assume this is the recipe for gather fruit. So we've got the fruit basket right there, which we can craft up next. Depression is down from the conversation, which is going to be nice. Especially good for those among us who have really, really high depression at the moment. They all got along during that task, so that's going to be very, very good. On this side, everybody's napping out. That should allow us to get fatigue down a little bit lower. I'll probably throw them around the campfire for the next phase. She got 75% done. She got to level 2, though, which is pretty good. I don't know exactly what... I'm probably going to have her do away missions. I'll probably work on her stealth and some other stuff. Are you okay, sweetie? Ah, uh, yes, Miss Alice. No problem. You're a brave little girl facing all that's happening, but... I wanted to tell you, you're not alone. I'll help you, however... She's 16. She's basically an adult. In any other time period, she would have been three years past an adult, considering... Ancient times, people started breeding and having families when they were 13, 14 years old. 16 is more than capable enough to take care of adult work. Hell, I know 16-year-olds that are supporting their whole family right now because their parents are unemployed and stuff like that. Either way, I wouldn't patronize her, but maybe that's part of the character. I'm not alone, miss. My dad is here. And Julia, I guess. Poor thing. Of course, I don't want to separate you from your father. But you know, if he's ever angry at you and you're afraid, you can tell me. I'll be there to protect you. My dad? Angry? <laughs> you don't know him. I don't need protection, miss. Not from my dad, at least. You're so innocent, my dear. That's sweet. It's heartwarming. But you never know with these types. Whoa! You know, it's coming out and saying it right there. You might wanna... You might wanna... You might wanna shut the old trap. I don't know what you're implying, but... It's starting to annoy me. Good night, miss. Well, Alice likes her, but Ileana doesn't like her. But yeah, I don't know. You shouldn't infer things about people's family members when you only known them for a couple of days. Especially when there's been zero conversation going on. So everything goes up a little bit. Unfortunately, you don't get any rest back while doing this. We've got some barely edible bullshit over here. I'm going to use that to sort of even people out, I guess. It doesn't really do a whole lot for you, but... You know, it'll take the edge off, I guess. So there it is right there. We should probably go all in on using these meals now. I'm not actually so sure. And so there it is right there. Everybody's looking pretty good. We more than likely want to rush the fruit basket, I think, so that we can get that out and start producing a little bit of food. Because as of right now, our foodstuffs are looking iffy. I think that's going to be it for us. Water supplies are sitting at 41 for right now, so we have suitable water supplies for five more days. The fire intensity is going to need to be tended to. 
And then I think we're also going to have to deal with psychological issues this time around. So he's still got depression. Depression is okay right there. They seem to be alright. Fatigue is coming back on this side. His fatigue is still 43. Let's rotate people around a little bit. I mean, in this situation, I think we have to accept that people are going to have like a baseline level of tiredness that they're just going to have to hustle through. But we're out of time for right now. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of... Uh...